So, uh, as, as Joan said, I uh, started to get interested in myself hypnosis um, when I was working with a pulmonologist who um, was had was had been teaching self hypnosis to children for um, over 20 years. And one of the reasons that he got interested in it was because in in the field of asthma, um, you if you are anxious mm -hmm. or worried, you're likely to um, bring on an asthma attack. And if you are having an asthma attack, then you, and you are, are anxious because you can't breathe, you know, it, make, it just makes everything worse. So if you can um, control the anxiety, then, and decrease the anxiety, you can actually have some control over your, um, over, in this particular case, the asthma. But, um, but it has been extended to work for many, um, many different problems for, um, for kids. I only teach kids, and so I actually don't have any experience with CDS, but I have much experience with um, children, especially teenagers, with um, headaches and just kind of general pain and um, lots of stomach problems. Um, I'm sure any of you who have children or grandchildren in the school system nowadays know that the stress on the kids for, uh, for their tests and everything is, is enormous, and that comes out in a lot of different ways. So that's kind of what, um, how we got to this point. Um, and uh, so I'll explain a little bit about self-hypnosis. So um, most people, when I use the word hypnosis, envision that person with the watch. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what I do. I don't control anybody. I don't make anybody do anything. There's no plucking of chickens in my office unless they, <laughs> unless they want to. Because it is all about what they want to do. It is nothing about what I want them to do. So I cannot hypnotize anyone except myself. And in fact, anytime if you've ever seen uh, an entertainer who is hypnotizing, that's that's a trick. They either know the person ahead of time or they it's it's total it's not real. Um, so um, because only only you, only each one of you can hypnotize yourself. So and um, you would probably be, be surprised to know that you have already done self-hypnosis at some point in your life. Probably in, in your head, okay? So there's a couple of ways that I can I can explain that you may have done it. Uh, one is when you're sitting in a situation like this and your mind kind of wanders off. Maybe <laughs> your teacher gets, the, the uh, uh, professor or whatever gets worried and so your mind wanders off. But then um, something, something happens. Either they say something that, you know, like cues you in that you want to pay attention again or <coughs> or in a, for a kid um, in a classroom, they, you know, the teacher asks a question and they're like, that's it. So basically it's like your mind is in two different places, okay? Because your mind is off in that place where you would much rather be, but yet you're, you know, you're immediately back in the, um, in the classroom world again. Okay? So that's actually a form of self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. um, another one um, that adults usually get is if you are, have ever driven and gone from point A to point B, and either not recall how you did it, or worse, you wind up at point C. <laughs> That's actually self-hypnosis. Okay. As Joan was going through my uh, my CV, I am originally from New York City, and I worked in St. Vincent's, and I lived in Brooklyn, and there were many times I drove over the Manhattan Bridge, and I have no idea how I got there. <laughs> so, so, but that that's a form of self-hypnosis too, because you're 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 thinking of something else, maybe just different things that you have to do, or or where you would rather be than driving the car, but yet you were driving the car and you're in control. So if, you, if there was a stoplight, you would stop, a stop sign, you would stop, you know, you're, you're in control. So your mind is actually, you know, kind of in different, different places at one time. So it is, it is a separation of the subconscious and the conscious mind, but it's, um, and that, so the self-hypnosis gets more in touch with the subconscious. So um, the way I generally teach it is that um, uh, the, I ask the child where they would like to imagine going to, and they choose a place, and they, and then I guide them through that. Okay. So, but it's all about what they want to do. I never tell them you're going to the beach. Okay? You, I never tell them you know you're going to the forest or whatever. And kids, I always, um, you would think, I, I think I'm not sure, but I think most adults would say you know they want to go to a relaxing place, which might be the beach or the forest, something like that. But kids, they like to go to Fun Junction 
or something with a trampoline or some scary roller coaster. Okay, so but it's it, I, I guide them through that because it's it's about them and about what they want to do and it gives them control over their body. Okay, it kind of teaches them to do that, which is perfect for sight reading. So um, I guide them through that and then they can use that to to do what they uh, need to need to accomplish. Um, so sometimes it's just simply to calm themselves down. Sometimes it's a very specific thing where they want to um, decrease pain um, or um, learn to eat food. If kids have uh, food aversions, they all of a sudden will stop eating certain foods. I had a young lady who suddenly decided she was no longer going to eat fruit. <laughs> so, <coughs> and in, in talking with her, it's it's like she had she had an instance where she was kind of soaked on some kind of food, mm. and then um, and then from then she just like stopped stopped eating it. So when when I teach her self-hypnosis, we kind of go back to that point that she she choked and take it one step back. And what what would happen if she um, if she didn't choke on the food? You know, and you know, and then you kind of change the and she eats food now. Yeah. You know. So um, it's so a good it's, redirect. It's a good redirect. That's exactly that's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's re, it's retraining your brain yeah. or relabeling something. So um, the uh, all right so. So self-hypnosis becomes a dream you're in control of. Okay, you can then use that for what you want to use it for. Okay. Um, it actually started, hypnosis actually started way back in like the late 1700s by um, someone named Anton Mesmer, which is where the word mesmerized yeah. comes from. Mm -hmm. um, and he, but his thing was that there was magnet, magnetic fields, uh, you know, and that you could, so you could, it was the magnetism that was kind of going through um, a person and, and that caused the attraction. So, um, but he, his, he, he then got into like kind of tree hugging and things like that and so he just kind of fell off. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and then, there, but then there were other people who kind of picked it up and, and then they decided that it was, it really was the imagination that, that really would, would help a person. Um, and there actually were people back then, the two main people whose names I've, I've forgotten, but they um, were surgeons and they could actually do surgery when someone was just under the point of self-hypnosis. And there are people who are, uh, that I know that are so good at self-hypnosis, they can actually have like dental, major dental procedures with just self-hypnosis. Mm -hmm. I am not at that point, okay? mm -hmm. but it's, it is possible to do that, okay? to, to get yourself in such a state that you don't feel that you're being well, Would it be the case that you would feel pain? It doesn't mean that, um, I, I explain this to kids, it doesn't mean that the pain is not real, it doesn't mean the pain is not there. What it means is that you can have control over it, okay? And, it, and it's a good feeling if you have control over something. So, and sometimes, like I said, sometimes that's simply calming yourself down, okay? And just being able to, to, to do that and being in control. Um, sometimes it's actually being able to kind of dial back the, the, the pain. When people are very good at self-hypnosis, they they, um, they can um, do that. It is something that's a real benefit for those people. So, um, are you going to show us how to do it? I can't. Uh, unfortunately, I can't demonstrate entirely so, um, hypnosis because if I do it in a group and somebody didn't alert and yeah. I'm not aware of that, that's a problem. Yeah. But I can show you a couple of things. Um, I I do need a volunteer. Um, I'm not going to hypnotize. Okay. Are you you are you the caretaker? Or are you yeah. okay? I need I need someone who's who doesn't have any uh, like pain up here, okay, and who's who is who is stable, okay? Um, you, stable emotionally? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's nobody stable emotionally. <laughs> I'm your girl. <coughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna have you stand here. Okay. And you don't have any pain in your shoulders, right? No. Okay. Are you right handed or left? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, what what do you think oh, of that? Wow. Yeah. 
It works every time except for with cross players, because they're really strong. Uh, uh, yes. It works every time. So what what do you and what do you think? What do you think it works? Uh, Why didn't it happen that way? Because when I was saying I'm strong, I felt strong. I felt strong. Right. And, and when you said you were weak? But weak. Yeah. Right. But you know what? When I was saying I'm weak, I thought you should be more gentle when you did. Right. <laughs> so there was some self doubt. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what it is. So it's 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 a case of thinking positively. That's how I explain it to the kids. It's what you what you think and or what you say is what happens in your body. The previous speaker said she had the mantra that she talked about, like, you know, and that it's the same thing. So if you if you are say that you have um, pain or you have discomfort, then um, it's you know, you're 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 going to have that. Okay? If you say, I'm comfortable, I'm calm, whatever word that you want to use, okay, because I, I can't tell you what the word is that you would use, I'm okay, whatever it is, then you you can have some control over it, okay? It may not go away, mm -hmm. okay, but you can have control over it. So it's, you know, because it's what, what you think and what you say um, controls what happens in your body, okay? Are you good? I thought you were gonna say something. Okay. <laughs> so um, so that's, that's something that's um, really, like, for the kids, they, they, they really, like, really absorb that, and it gives them, it gives them power, and it's, it gives you power, too, because it gives you control over what's happening in your body. It's the demonstration that shows that, okay? So it has to be a very positive, positive word. So you can't say, I am not weak, okay? So do you know what would happen if you say you were not weak? I guess I would still doubt myself. Because right. the, the, brain, the brain doesn't hear the word not. Back. The mm -hmm. brain doesn't hear the word not. It hears the, the, the full word. So it's, mm -hmm. it's going to hear weak. And so if you say, um, I, you know, I'm not going to be in pain, mm -hmm. it's going to hear pain. Uh, another thing, uh, self-hypnosis is a lot about language. So, um, so when uh, a child comes to me with headaches, um, and usually you say, you know, my pain, my headache. If you begin to use the word the, the pain, you don't own it anymore. It's a it's a it's a mind thing, okay? But it's it's that, okay? And then as I'm talking to them, I'll, they they talk about their their headache. I, they talk about their headache, the headache, and I, and they start to say the headache. And then I change it to discomfort, because discomfort mm, doesn't seem as bad as a headache. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just relabeling the word mm -hmm. can make you feel more comfortable. Just just like very it's. All about like you know the, the the language that you use that that can be very very helpful. So um, let me see. So what I can teach you one technique that you some of you may know already. Um, actually, before I do that, I can uh, I can show you how the imagination works. Okay. So who has a good imagination? It's not going to matter if you have if you have difficulty with uh, thinking. You have a good imagination. Why don't you just sit there and I'll come over. Can everybody see over here? Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what do magnets do? So what I'd like you to do is put the hands up straight like that. Perfect. Okay. And I would like you to imagine that those hands are magnets. Imagine what they look like. in a few moments, they're going to touch. And when they touch, the hands just open up higher. Yeah. But you're still using your imagination. Okay, so what, what did you feel? I felt like they're just going. They're coming, they're like they were magnets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, in, so that, that shows, like most people can, can do that. 
okay? And it, it shows that um, your imagination is very powerful. And so, you know, just by imagining that your hands are magnets, they become magnets. And also, when, when I do that, I don't say your hands. I always say, imagine the hands, those hands, okay? Because they, then it becomes somebody else. It's, it's like separated from your, from your body, okay? And so, um, what I can teach you is um, a technique um, called either diaphragmatic breathing or, or belly breathing. I don't know if any of you have ever learned that, but it's a very relaxing technique. It's a technique that can be used to then progress into hypnosis, but it's not necessary. It's it's something that you really don't go into a full trance for. It's like a trance for. Um, so I will. Um, I can show you that. So if everybody can just take a nice deep breath and you take a breath the same way that you have always taken a breath. Okay, you fill up your lungs up here. Okay, but if you put your hands on your belly. And this is easier to do lying down, okay? So it's a good thing to do when you're when you're maybe going to fall asleep. And it can help you to fall asleep too, okay? So when you take the next breath in, what I would like you to do is breathe in slowly through your nose, and I'm going to count to seven. And then, and when you breathe, you can either use your imagination and uh, imagine that you are filling a ball or a balloon that's in your belly, or just feel that breath go down so that it kind of fills your belly. So instead of your chest moving up here, you'll feel your belly move. So, and I'm going to count, and instead of the number one, I'm going to say in, okay? So in, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me just write that. Okay, so there are three parts to breathing, okay? The first is in, the second is hold, and the last is out, okay? So when you, I'm gonna count again, and you're gonna breathe in to seven, you're going to hold to the count of five, and then you're going to gently blow out your mouth to the count of seven. Okay. So in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, six. Seven is Sometimes seven is like too much. Most adults can do seven, but sometimes it's too much. So you can do six or six too if you, if you need to, okay? So did you want to practice that again? Okay, so in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hold, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So you may notice that It is very effective for falling asleep. So, you know, just to kind of do that before. And then, um, and then it is, you're in a, not really a trance, but you're, you're starting to go into a trance because you've just calmed yourself down. So if at the end of doing <coughs> that two or three times, you just want to say some positive thoughts to yourself, then that, that can be very helpful. And if you want to stop doing that, so you can do that too. Okay. And when you do childbirth, Sometimes I, I then go into like the, the self hypnosis, which is a, a guided imagery, basically. Okay. And so, um, but um, you know, so it's just that always that slow, mm -hmm. steady, yeah. and, and that mm -hmm. slow step three is right. just what got me through mm -hmm. um, in between pain medication. Right. Yeah. Every time Dan comes in, you say, Let the nose out the mouth. <laughs> yes, we did. That's out right. Yeah. We used to find when people would. Because I get anxious. Yeah. 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 And, to, and so it's and. Anxiety just makes everything worse. Yeah. It really just makes everything worse. Yeah. You know, you're, you, you, maybe you're tense up or whatever, it's just like it does. So if you can decrease that anxiety, you can. Oh, family size. Mm -hmm. Family size. Family size? Oh. 
<laughs> get rid of that anxiety. Right, that's right. And you can do that if you, you know, like you, you can, you can, um, when you breathe in, you can breathe in the comfort, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. Some people, you know, just comfort. Some people like to imagine that it's, it's a particular color that's comforting to them or a sound that's comforting to them when they breathe in. So you can do that. And then as you, when you hold it, and then when you breathe out, you actually, you can imagine that you're breathing that comfort to where you need it to be, wherever that is. Mm -hmm. So, or you're, maybe you're breathing out the discomfort, which, you know, whatever. So it's, it's like what will work for, um, for you. And, and different things work for different people. Mm -hmm. um, that's, it, that's really kind of it in a nutshell. It's very simple. Um, and the um, rheumatology, and she um, is uh, an integrative medicine. Okay, mm -hmm. so she does. She doesn't do acupuncture, but she does a lot of with um, uh, essential oils and uh, um, the smells and things like that. And because she's uh, like, I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, so I can only see children. But pediatricians can actually treat adults. So, um, so she, you know, she and she's at us. Have any other questions? I have a comment. Sure. You probably don't remember, but I actually was at your lecture at the Nurse Practitioners Conference <laughs> recently. <laughs> okay. And um, I, I, I came home and told my husband, and I, I shouldn't say it like this, but I said, well, I could have taught three of the lectures that I went to. I said, but I went to this fascinating one on <laughs> self hypnosis. And everybody, I didn't realize what, what I was, what, what I think there were terror wards or the same thing. Oh, okay. And I did it to him, I did it to everybody. <laughs> I was like, look at this. And I've been going, what do I, every time he'll call me, calls me a couple times a day, he'll, well, how are you doing? I'm happy. I, I'm just like, I'm not going to be paper. And I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to go tampering around everywhere. So I just wanted to quick take this moment and thank you <laughs> because I, I, I thought it was, Works. Really, it, it works. was like yeah. really, really. It does. It's fascinating. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a pill. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm a pretty positive person, but she really look at him. But he, um, <laughs> he was overweight, and he wanted to to lose weight. And so, you know, when you, so what he did is he he labeled it that he wanted to resize himself, <laughs> and he he did actually lose uh, a lot of weight, and then never gained. A lot of it is just the words you choose to, um, to, to mm. do something. Well, and I'm just so happy that you're doing this for children because I'm sure that you would have a lot of, if you are going to take the gap, it's just so oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So it, it's like for kids, like for ADHD, it's like you can teach them a way to focus themselves. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. um, so that they, uh, sometimes their medication. Does, does it like ever get to any, like, weight loss but it does I don't work a whole lot with weight loss and this does work for um, stopping smoking but I fortunately don't have too many kids that smoke that I have that issue but um, but it can it can so, be so if someone was to use the word resize themselves so and, and that takes quite a while yes you know so if they just kind of practice it nothing throughout their day yeah so when um, the uh, the deep breathing you can do anytime like that that's something that you could you just take a minute and you can do that um, the the self hypnosis which is guided imagery where it can take um, can take like it can take five minutes or it can take fifteen minutes depending on on the person so what I also teach them is like a, to have a hand signal that's a cue 
goals so that they, they learn the process and then they have like the, the kit that they chew or thumbs up or whatever they choose. And then throughout the day, like when they're about to take a test, um, they, they can use that and they can calm themselves down. You just get the feeling of the, the hunger. So that, that's something that, you know. So they got the feeling of hunger or whatever, you might do this. For pain, basically. But I mean, you have to eat too. So. Right, right. <laughs> Things that Western medicine cannot treat are the things that acupuncture usually can treat. 